So hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. I'm absolutely delighted to be here with Kutsia Rahim, who is the powerhouse behind the Lahore Biennale Foundation and the Lahore Biennale, which the second edition of which happened earlier this year. It wrapped up in February, as Kutsia was just telling us. Um, Kutsia received her undergraduate degree from the National College of Arts and a master's from Alfred University. She is the executive director of the Lahore Biennale Foundation and the director of the Lahore Biennale both of which she co-founded in 2014. And prior to LBF, Kutsia worked as an associate professor and a curator at the Zahur al Gallery in Lahore, which is a part of NCG, her alma mater. She has organized um, artist residency exchange programs and uh, research-driven initiatives. As part of LBF, uh, Kutsia has also started really exciting uh, separate entities, to put it, Miley, I suppose there's different projects, which include an environmental project that she's going to talk to us about, as well as a research-based initiative. So I'm really excited that Kutsia is here, and I'm really looking forward to hearing more of what she's been up to and how the Biennale came together and where she sees it moving forward. So Kutsia, thank you once again for being here. Hey, thank you so much for inviting. Um, totally delighted. Yes. <laughs> no, so I, I thought actually we could sort of start back with maybe way back when. Um, I know that, you know, after NCA, you studied and you, you went to the States and you moved back to Lahore and that's when you joined NCA. I wanted to ask what that transition was like for you and how was it to rejoin your college or university as a professor and as a curator? And also, I want you to tell me about your own art practice. I know there are many questions, but let's start with them. Um, well, I, I did my master's in glass sculpture from Alfred University. I spent some time over there, was uh, very lucky to, to have some really fantastic professors. I think um, later on, I realized that my practice uh, really informed the work that I am doing today. And I'll speak a little bit of that a bit later. Uh, we moved about 10 years ago, and um, <laughs> I thought I was going to start my own practice and not going to teach at NCA, but NCA has a beautiful pull, and Nazi Shadawala was the principal at that time, and Mariam Hussain, uh, you know, they just roped me in and said, you know, <laughs> little did I know a week later, I was working seven days a week. And, oh, uh, wow. And, and like a month later, they, the, then they asked me to look into the Zahur Islam Gallery over there, which was not operational at that time. And mm. uh, me being, me, I'm, um, uh, once I got into that space, it was just, uh, you know, like, like a gem and, and in, in so many ways that uh, it was untapped. It didn't have a program. So I was requested to create a program for it. Um, I was looking at the vantage point you know it was catering the entire uh, school so it was not while it was situated in um, the fine arts department it its mandate required it to interact with other departments as, as well okay. so that I think was one of the turning points in my career when I took over the space and I started curating exhibitions. I had no curatorial background, of course. So that also in a way now that I see in hindsight kind of like worked to my advantage because yeah. then I was not necessarily curating anything. I was actually using the space and using the energy of the art school and, uh, and um, doing various experimentation within that space where normal galleries or other spaces would not have allowed. Mm. So I think that was really beautiful to be given that um, freedom and that freedom that National College of Arts had um, to uh, give me. Uh, so there were lots of, I started curating lots of um, um, inviting various artists and you to request them to use it as an experimental space. Um, I invited international collaborators. Initially, I was like, uh, you know, they were like, so there were all these new entities coming in and they were like, okay, is it a good thing for NC or not? And then later on, of course, we realized that 
various collaborations took place. Uh, we um, had international local uh, exhibitions that started coming in. Uh, we started seeing some uh, prestigious exhibitions coming in. We um, uh, film festivals and those kind of things um, that I was able to, to work on. And in some capacity, all of this was a way uh, accumulative knowledge or work that I was doing for perhaps later on um, initiating the, the, the foundation. Um, but I think it the other times and I think your fresh eyes, your fresh intake, the fact that you had also mm -hmm. attended NCA, the fact that it was mm -hmm. very intern multidisciplinary, obviously worked in your advantage and also in the advantage of the Zuhur Laka gallery because you were able to completely, mm -hmm. well, not even turn it around since it had never been done, but really bring a very fresh perspective to it mm -hmm. and go all out. So we're doing, totally, we're doing seminars, residencies, symposiums. Oh, wonderful. Uh, using artists were using that space as an experimental um, space where galleries or other institutions, commercial institutions would not be able to do. And uh, in a country mm -hmm. like Pakistan, museums, there's dirt on museums, there's dirt of other counter institutions. So this became like a beautiful space where people and artists, uh, creative thinkers to, uh, could actually come and um, uh, do some insight on their personal practice. Um, meanwhile, uh, you know, uh, I think the next step was um, the uh, elective that um, I then further introduced at NCA, which was a public-private government partnership where money was brought in to do the elective and then mm -hmm. NCA was um, posting this um, um, uh, at a local oncology ward. Uh, okay. And we had faculty and experts kind of join in. So it was a very multidisciplinary, multi, um, um, uh, it was very effective in various ways because we were in touch with um, experts from the city that we had brought in. We had our students who were used to working in a classroom environment and now mm. they were brought into a public space and had to deal with its challenges, but they were not expected to, uh, they, they were supposed to look into the discipline to see how that can uh, help the, the environment in a short-term, long-term capacity, not put pretty pictures on the wall. I mean, that was important too, because it's, it's uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> but how it's, it's though. yeah. So and it's really challenge yeah, I think it was very interesting because then we saw the architecture students. Uh, so it was it was nice because all three departments, students from all three departments could join in. So architecture mm -hmm. department students were looking at the mapping of the place and they were making, they realized that finding locations in that um, hospital was very difficult, right? So mm -hmm. what they were then doing was uh, creating a, a map of that space and created legends. And then they planted the color coded. So the yellow line would go to the bathroom, and the pink line would go to the ladies' room, uh, to the ladies' uh, ward, or the blue would go to the radiology and those kind of things. So there was lots of those kind of interventions that took place, which was very effective. Then um, <clears throat> fine arts students was looking at it uh, differently and brought in color and brought in um, mm -hmm. certain organizational skills similarly you know so um textile and other people we we created a um there was a lobby uh, on on one side that they created into um, a tea room and uh, so this was also very helpful because uh, these wards were very congested and uh, the chemotherapy uh, uh, the patients getting the chemo uh, would get very nauseous with all the yes. food and uh, things. So they created a small lobby where, where there was a tea room space and the caregivers would go over there and, and decompress and talk to yes. each other. And that was like a cathartic. What a so it wonderful was a beautiful project. Yeah. Well done to you I think for it, taking it on and pushing it forward. I think it was it was an interesting time, um, a moment in that time where we saw um, uh, these various partnerships kind of develop. And I think we picked up 
a very strong uh, support uh, uh, in form of Usman uh, Khalid Bahid, who was mm -hmm. uh, heading the Kurosans at that time. And, and this partnership kind of continued then later towards the, uh, the development of the, uh, the foundation and uh, oh, then really? further we worked together towards uh, this cause. So it, we did a few rounds of this um, elective and then we soon realized that uh, it was um, a very important thing to do, a very important step. And perhaps uh, doing it on a larger scale or, and having more complexities involved in it was very important. And um, uh, remaining with NCA was um, uh, important. Uh, but as a partner, but we needed a wider mm -hmm. frame. So I think um, those were also the times when we are looking at arts also speaking up a certain way in mm -hmm. the local landscape, the film industry picking up uh, tremendously, the art, fine arts was already doing very well uh, world over. Our artists uh, appreciated, had been appreciated for a very long time, but, you know, we see the strength now coming up. Um, the music industry, you know, uh, we, we're looking at all these theater and other industries were picking up. So I say this as, a, as a, not as a joke, but I really mean it. If, if it was not me and us and the like-minded people that were around me at the time who actually brought this idea alive, it would have happened anyways, because this foundation and this idea had to be picked up. We started, um, so, you know, so that was the pre-journey, as you I can say. I think that's very um, humble of you, could see. I have to say. <laughs> I think it's a very humble thing to say, and I do not think it is true. I think it does, you, you need people like yourself who take on challenges and make changes. And then everybody follows suit. So I think you're being far too humble with those words. But it's pretty amazing how almost you know, such large things can sometimes come out of the most unexpected and small projects. It just depends how you take them on and how you decide to work with challenges presented to you. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much for saying that. But I will take a thank you from from all the people who are part of this whole I'm movement sure. together with me because um, it, it it takes a few people to yeah. to to give a lot of the energy in it, but then they all these people around them, you know, they're invisible <laughs> in the background, but they're there. So of I have lots of really cool um, advisors, really cool, um, you know, people who, uh, you know, just uh, Imran Qureshi the other day texted me saying, Kutsa, take a look at this building. This is our next building to, to <laughs> add into the Bahrain. So, you know, uh, Atik, Atik Udin this artist, architect. Yeah. Uh, Bradley Hall was, he showed me Bradley Hall, right? Wow. And uh, it was one of our, uh, uh, this, uh, we were going around the city. She, he gave me a tour, me and Hura tour. And in the tour, he was show, he showed us about and gave us um, a tour of the Art Deco paintings and, and what a difficult condition they are living in. I remember the the, uh, the collateral event that you did mm. um, for the biennial, and now that building is there no more. Uh, it's really difficult because these spaces are in such important areas of the city, and they um, uh, are very vulnerable. And there's very nobody uh, protecting them. Um, we're hoping that at some point we'll be able to actually, again, speak to the government, speak to the right people and um, get some some movement on it. But until then, um, it feels terrible when, you know, one of these art deco buildings goes down. So lots no, of people uh, true. Yeah. So tell me a little mm -hmm. bit, I mean, we've spoken a bit about the foundation and how you sort of, the idea came to you out of this project that you were doing, how you decided to set it up with various partners. Um, but I know that the foundation doesn't just do the Biennale. Would you like to chat a little bit about the other arms of the foundation, perhaps? I know you do workshops, you you know, involved in academic residencies as well, research. It'd be lovely to hear a little bit about that before we delve into the Biennale conversation. So I think let's just chat 
a, a bit about the city first. So okay. while all of these really interesting movements were already happening in the city and we thought that uh, it is important, Lahore is an automatic site for um, artistic expression, intervention. Okay. It has been a melting pot of various economical, social, political, um, and uh, ideological um, uh, references and in so many ways um, has been the catalyst or an, an important player in the region in so many capacities. We have the border, we have, you know, people who come in, um, uh, uh, various demographics and those kind of things, the publics, as, uh, you know. Um, so it was in so many capacities, the perfect place to have these conversations and this um, this kind of energy kind of create into a melting pot. So what is, we, we decided when we started the foundation, we decided that we're not going to do the biennial for the first couple of years at least. You know, we're going mm. to work in the city to understand what we are dealing with and what are the conditions, what are the local conditions. I mean, in my house, in my, in my own capacity, I see things very differently. But um, then again, uh, two doors now, down, people are looking at things differently. The different demographics looking at behaving with the city or responding to the city differently. And various artists doing the same. The government, again, is a very major player. So how does one work? So we decided that we're going to do some, some uh, years of uh, uh, experimentative kind of uh, create an experimental approach, do some projects. We did um, um, City Within a City, Atif Khan's mm -hmm. project that was uh, yeah. one of our first public art projects that we did. Uh, right before that, we did the one in um, uh, Liberty Market, right? Okay. Uh, My East is Your West uh, yes, with with Rashid Rana and with uh, the Venice Pioneer, and mm -hmm. it was very successful. That wonderful gave us a lot project. of momentum. Wonderful yeah. project. That gave us a lot of momentum. Then we, once we started, you know, my I, I was scared, so scared doing this, um, the first public project, which is what I call, uh, you know, the one in front of NCA um, mm -hmm. by Istanbul. I was like, I don't know how the government's going to respond. I don't know how the people are going to, take it I don't know how the artist everybody loved it and even <laughs> in the, the dislike there was resolve in it so you see what was happening was that when we did the project I was like okay what's going to happen and then when it hits the social media that's when you know the, the litmus test you know one yeah. of the litmus tests and people were loving it. And then they were like, what is this? You know, the pigeons can't live in there. Or <laughs> what is this made for pigeons? Is it like already pigeons over there. They're already living in their homes. Why do we need these things? And then somebody's saying, what a great idea. That is what we wanted, a conversation. Of so those conversations led us to an insight, led us to other public art projects. We did uh, another project uh, with, um, it's called Where the Bus Stops, though, so, you know, uh, this is a public art project for the people, by the people, that's what I would like to say, where we created 72 bus stops with the government help support, oh, and, you know, we went and we spoke to them, we said, you don't have bus stops, what are you, what are you doing? Uh, can we create these bus stops uh, for people to come and wait? You know, article to Barsat, there's lots of rain, no, mm. no place to stand. There were no Let shelters. Mm -hmm. So give us your limitations. They say, oh, no, no more than three light rupees. I said, that's not a problem. We, we don't, uh, no light, right? We're not going to give you light. I said, no, not a problem. So we, we did this open call, right? And these open calls are fantastical because then we got to receive a whole bunch of these projects that then a jury selected and then we chose seven routes on which we, we then created the project. It, it got so much attention that neighboring cities started asking for it and um, the, 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 you know, the government uh, people got really excited because I, I was told once that, uh, you know, it became one of those landmarks where people were when they were given tour of the city, the the guests 
that come to the city they will be taken to, <laughs> to go see the last time yeah that's brilliant so that, <laughs> and it shows the importance of public art it shows why contemporary and public art are both so important and how the city yeah. can only just benefit yeah. from them yeah. and for once we created something together we created something for the people who were traveling on these mass, mass transits mm. and you know it was a purpose built idea it was a designer's item in some place where you feel good happy stand to stand and wait for your public uh, transport to come so i think those things were important and then to further understand the landscape of course residencies were important uh, talks were important some of these were town hall style talks some of these were organized talks uh, uh, curated talks like art speaks i thought that was very uh, effective because we were getting a lot of information from these talks and the questions after these talks so we can uh, we could then further our programming uh, in a certain capacity so uh, i think um, uh, these things are very important for us to engage uh, but from the earlier on i think the foundation had a very very strong mandate of uh, research driven approach mm. uh, for informed learning um, a little bit of uh, uh, um, academic lens was important although we uh, we are very happy to call ourselves a counter institute but we also would like to call ourselves um somebody who promotes thinking promotes projects and ideas uh, with the thinking process is very important to us so i think um we and, and why a lot of this did you find that it was lacking in the current art fabric what did you what was the reason or the impetus perhaps behind focusing so much on research and academia as well and bringing it into the art conversation so you see if you uh, look at the way we all are constituted it we we are a verbal uh, kind mm. of um, a community right we we less um, written in more more verbal our music mm. is you know come down to us through a verbal uh, kind of uh, stream a story mm -hmm. telling is all verbal are so a lot of times history is very unforgiving so if you don't record history which has a little it's not so gharano mein to wo badi khoobsurti se chal rahi hai bas aap usko control kare khaas tarike se aur agar aap usko practice bhi kare to badi achhi baat hai but history jahan pe kisi ki domain nahi hai wahan par usko record karna bahut important hai and if yeah. once you are not able to do that we we lose a certain a very strong aspect a, a strong portion of your life um, of, of your history right so i think it was very important for us from the get go and also because most of us involved in this uh, initiative were also academics yes uh, it was a natural <laughs> and that's important i think so i think uh, i'm i'm a, there's certain things i feel urgency towards i think uh, recording history i feel very uh, urgency towards it i think 70s 80s we we need to be doing all that we can to be recording history because Definitely. people are still amongst us they are alive the history so we can get a lot of information um uh, we can collect a lot of data we can collect a lot of you know a lot of work can be done so i think research uh, based work uh, learning investigative learning is very important but it's also imperative 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 that we invest ourselves um uh, in uh, in recording history and in a way that we are not um, mm. uh, but i see a great movement towards that also so it's not <laughs> without fail i saw you know these two fantastic girls rabia and um, that they are starting this uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, a journal which is which i think is going to be fantastic lots of yes. artists locally are also doing research driven work which i think is very important um it's it seems like um it, it's not a lost cause i'm not saying there's something wrong with it but i'm just think that this is how we are and i think this is no, how agreed. we position and i and i think it's important for the foundation to support research and um academia as well mm -hmm. because that leads to more people the ball going forward essentially and more people getting involved and more people becoming inspired 
Mm-hmm. I think so. Mm-hmm. True. <laughs> True that. And coming back to the foundation itself, I know that, you know, in addition to the focus on academia and research, you've also instilled an important culture of partnerships and really working with the city. You spoke about that a little bit earlier, but I wondered whether you could chat a little bit about that, about how you, you know, because I know that you really believe in taking the government and the city along with you as you're moving forward. I think it will be good to hear about that in more detail. Um. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. I think that's that's that's, that's a given. Um, I think when we started the foundation, all of us were involved in the primary, who are the primary caregivers of the foundation. We totally, all of us understand the importance of partnership, the importance of collective learning and bringing strength to a certain project or idea through collective learnings and uh, research and I mean, uh, a driven approach. So I think um, collaborations in that fa- in that is very important. The way the foundation was designed, like most not not for profit, are inward looking, but like they they get an idea or they work on a project, they do it internally, and once that's com- finished, that concludes, they they present it. But what we like to do is we like to actually uh, bring an opportunity such that we can actually uh, send it out as an open call to mm. to people to apply for it to to approach it in a certain way and uh, present it. It's it's their li- learning and their findings. Um, so I think for things like that to happen it's best effective if various partners institutions are involved. I think it was very important for Pakistan to open to international local partnerships. I think that was very important. We were able to work on some very important partnerships um, uh, and some we are working with today. I think uh, Sharjah is another very good example that I would say that we worked with uh, for last several years and then this partnership kind of culminated in the form of um, who are curating the second biennial for us. I think that's another very successful and important way of looking at partnership and developing these partnerships to to then further, uh, you know, take the idea forward. Government is uh, is is a is a uh, if we want to do art in public space and if that is our primary mandate. We cannot do it without the government. Very right. So, government is is automatically a primary partner, whether it is an active partner or it is a passive partner. Uh, the nice thing is that we all want the same things. The government and the bureaucrats and the people who are in these important positions, they also want the same results as what we want or what we are striving for. So, keeping everybody together, keeping everybody aligned, and having a uniform voice. Um, because we're not working against anybody, right, And or against anything. So it's really important for us to then work together, which if it means that we work with their pace, they work with our pace, sometimes we would work with their pace, sometimes they would work with our pace, but keeping everybody involved, mm-hmm. having a very, very transparent system and uh, creating synergies, um, uh, that's what I thought and I've experienced works best, especially in my case. Um, so, yeah. And especially when you're working with a city like Lahore, which, I mean, you, you mentioned this earlier, where certain buildings are completely hidden, certain buildings are either falling apart or in very delicate situations. You do need to involve the city government and make sure that nothing ever happens that might cause, you know, future additions to be stopped or, you know, anything dangerous to happen either to the public or to the artworks or the artists in a sense is the foundation are responsible for all of it mm-hmm. it's, it's a risk one has to take it, it, yeah. it it's not a risk it's a calculated no no it's not a risk it's a calculated series of action that one has to take to ensure that make we have to make sure that no incident happens of course we have to make sure that even the building, like uh, in case of Bradlow Hall, we tried to fix it before we wanted to move in, ideally mm-hmm. speaking. But it doesn't, um, it doesn't, we couldn't do it, right? So there were lots yeah. of reasons why one maybe that acts 
you know, lots of reasons why we couldn't get it. But we still worked on a system. We created a system so people were safe. They would not have to, you know, uh, nothing should fall off or those kind of things. We, we went in with our Khan team uh, with uh, Rashid Magdoum. I'm a great fan of his, uh, what a brilliant uh, man he is, and his team, Saad and everybody. They went in, Rashid Saad went in, a, uh, did a, a primary assessment for us. So he is with Akhan uh, Culture Foundation. Okay. So they went in the, the, the prim, primary, um, we took in a surveyor inside, we took in uh, other experts like the Mir Hassan inside to, to make sure that this building is not going to collapse, this building will be able to sustain. So we take measures. We have uh, this fantastic office of Nayar Ali Dada, um, uh, who are one of the pioneer uh, forces behind the conservation and um, uh, um, heritage building, looking after uh, these heritage sites. I mean, we, we I seek it advice from him all the time of course right <laughs> we work we work a lot with uh, heritage buildings right mm -hmm. so being uh, wcla with us is very important working with the guidelines is very important working with our hand guidelines is very important um and we keep consulting uh, so so while we work very closely with the government and we've never had any problems um, in terms of artwork display or what we can show, what we can't show. You know, that's fantastic and that's very that. generous of them. In fact, I think we got a question which I was going to address at the end, but I'm so glad that you mentioned this now, that there's been no censorship or no attempts no, to control what you're doing. That's brilliant. Not at all. Not at all. Not even like, um, not even like, a, uh, so, so some, somebody was interviewing me the other day and so I was like, so the government, you know, I'm sure they do all kinds of censorship, those kind of things, not at all. That's they, they, it, we have been working in the public space for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, not a very long time, but six years, right? Mm -hmm. And we have seen how we work and public space is not a space of conflict. Public space is not a space for riots. If you if you want your artwork to produce a riot, then you want your artworks work to produce a riot. But if you are, if your public artwork is geared towards to to nurture a certain emotion and nurture a certain feeling, uh, uh, respond to certain conditions then it will respond to certain conditions. Mm. So artwork, when it's done in public space, is very different from artwork when it's done perhaps in a, in a gallery because the conditions very change, true. the systems change, those kind of dialogues change. And artworks, when it's in um, other spaces, uh, they, they have a different energy and they have a different... Um, uh, art, for an artist, the outcome is very important, right? Of so... We don't uh, get into those kind of, nobody's ever seen any of, my, any of the pioneer artworks <laughs> ever. But when it comes to heritage buildings, we make sure that the artwork that is going to go in a certain space, we are in conversation with the, the WCLA, we're in conversation with the um, uh, with the uh, Nair Ali Dada office, we're in conversation with the um, uh, our Khan people and we work and display them so it's uh, with their recommendations so no incident there's no uh, these kind of uh, so it's not a chance it's a uh, it, it has to be done right right mm -hmm. No, definitely. I completely agree. Especially since, yeah, the public realm is entirely different from the private one. And you also have to respect the public mm -hmm. and respect their opinions, their thought processes, as well as the government who's there to take care of public spaces. Um, I wanted to ask you, so I know that the first mm -hmm. edition of the Lahore Biennale was primarily curated by yourself. How did it feel to be back and board as a curator? and take on that added responsibility in addition to being the director already and having all of that to deal with? I, I think it was, it was very cathartic in many ways. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was all these learnings and then I was able to, with of course, with the help of my advisors, Iftikha Dadi, Aisha Khali, Aisha Jitoi, Razali Dada, Usman for that edition, I could not, have done any of this work without their 
you know, support without their involvement. Um, so a lot of uh, a lot of uh, this may look like a, a one man show, but it's not so much. Yeah, but course. yes, there is. <laughs> I think what it was was validation that there is room for art in public spaces. There is room for dialogue. There is room and in it's very important to have these dialogues. I think that Definitely. was important. Um, I think uh, I remember when we, when I was trying to to um, uh, to decide the locations, I was literally going there every day to study the kind of people were coming in, the kind of demographics that were coming in, uh, how many people were coming. Because the idea was to bring out two people and not bring them to an isolated space where a lot of times what happens is that we were doing this for the first time it was very important for us that the city of Lahore hosts the pioneer and the yeah. local condition hosts the pioneer and we are uh, in direct conversation with them and uh, it, so so those kind of things are very important so our goals for the first pioneer were very different from the goals for the second pioneer so the first mm-hmm. pioneer we wanted to exist we wanted to to um, find out how it works, right? So the two weeks at that time felt like a lifetime. <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but, but and it, Lahore what, responded. Oh, I remember Lahore responded. Lahore responded. Lahore was so excited. Mm-hmm. I mean, every single site mm-hmm. was visited and visited mm-hmm. and visited, and wonderful things were written mm-hmm. about it. People really engaged mm-hmm. in the artwork. The artists really came out and supported the Biennale mm-hmm. as well. So. What a triumph, you know? I I think I think that's what it was. I think the artists you you spot on there. The artists came out to support. The people yeah. came out to support. And to be and became part of the pineal. I think those things were uh, unparalleled. And I, I couldn't uh, have um, asked for um, a better response. Um, somebody said something, uh, one of uh, the comments, which is my favorite comment, <laughs> it was that, uh, that the Lahore ko Lahore dikha diya. So, I thought that was really nice. I remember the kid doing picnics in the park. So having a park was just a natural uh, selection. I remember when we were trying to select these places, I was, you know, working on these various, uh, you know, locations, trying to find out. I would conduct my meetings in these parks. I remember Razi Ahmed, this friend of mine, I was like, tum, tum coffee le karao, main <laughs> 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 le karao. Park le milte, and he's sitting in the park and chatting and then talking about this, that and the other. And he runs uh, the Lohal Literary Festival and I run this thing. We've been very close friends and we chat a lot about are um, uh, uh, you know, different, different. Yeah, yeah. We, we talk about our programs a lot, and then we're sitting over there and chatting, and I'm looking over there and saying, "Okay, this is perfect." You know, there's you know all kinds of like um, people are there, the kids are there, the women and family are there. We have to have art over here, so it's it's really um, was something that. We worked uh, very diligently and mm-hmm. uh, I, towards it. And, and then I'm, I'm so glad that it came together and then the city responded. It really did. And tell me, you were saying that the first biennial themes and your thought process is quite different from the second. Do you want to chat a little bit more about the second one now? I know that, so for the second one, you invited the Sharja um, curator and director, Sheikha Kuril Qasimi, to come on board. I'm sure you were quite relieved to have certain responsibilities taken care of, but how did it change the dynamic? What was the sort of impetus behind that finale? How was it different? I think um, in some capacity, we, I mean, whenever we talk amongst ourselves, we call it the first true biennial, right? Mm. Uh, because this is the first time you have an invited curator who comes into mm-hmm. your space and looks into your space um, uh, with their eyes and their experience. And I could not have, uh, you know, in, you know, at that time I was very happy 
because I've been following Sharjah Foundation, Sharjah Biennial yeah. for a very long time. We've been a partner for the previous Biennial and um, I really loved the March meetings. Um, so it was something that was culminating, uh, mm -hmm. slowly developing towards um, this idea. When we invited her, I you know, was looking at the program and looking at the things I knew that this is a person who's deeply uh, entrenched with the local realities and the regional Definitely. realities. We have to understand Biennial is not a national show. It's not mm -hmm. about how many local artists you can fit in one exhibition. It's not a national show. They are national shows are called national shows, right? The Biennial is where you have these local global conversations, important conversations, things that are contemporary in nature, issues that are relevant, uh, ideas that, you know, either unites or, or disengages people. Uh -huh. There has to be a proper kind of a thought process around it. But it also is a beautiful place to create local global conversations, linkages. This is a place where Pakistan gets to stand with the rest of the world shoulder to shoulder in art and culture and um, various capacities. Inviting her was fantastic. She is a very refined curator. Mm -hmm. Her knowledge for the region is intense. She's Definitely. been working in the field since she was, what, 21 years old and um, doing a very prolific job. She is a trained curator. So it, they, they, everything was just spot on. And then she started making these selections of artists. It just was, and the thought process, it was just really beautiful to see how one work was then talking to the other, how mm -hmm. these artists, we had over 22 new commissions. It was really beautiful to see Wonderful. these artists, artists come into Pakistan, look at for site visits, look at these various um, locations. Um, we had 13 sites the third time. Uh, yeah. They may seem a few, uh, quite a few, but it all gelled in together very beautifully. And then the various it's conversations, it was made on various levels that was beautiful. The people, the thinkers and the scholars that were able to then come to uh, for the biennial, I think we were very lucky to have them. Um, so I mean, it, also, it, not, not to toot Lahore's horn, but very lucky for them as well. <laughs> You know, to have the chance to come and visit that city. It's, it's so famous, you know, and famed. Yeah. The Mughal Garden, so they much were, history. Yeah, you saw them, right? And they yeah. were all over the place. They were Definitely. all over the place. There was no security issues. There were no... Yeah, thank nothing. God. Some of them were not... Some, yeah, but it's, Lahore is a very low-time city. It's a very yeah. welcoming city. Definitely. It's a very warm city. So... so and Pakistan in general, it's, it's, a, it's a fun place to be. Very so I think it, it was really wonderful to see all of that. I think we were able to create for the Biennial some really significant pieces. Um, so th I think that was very important. The International Biennale Association was, uh, you know, so there were so many other ways that we connected with the rest of the world, mm -hmm. with the Biennial Association. Um, you know, had the uh, annual meeting in Lahore. So the curators and the board members from all over the world, you know, who uh, came over for uh, the meeting in Lahore and then they had a really great time and they were really talking about Lahore hospitality. So it was, and then and Lahore food, became probably. this place. Where <laughs> Absolutely. Well, there was um, a new commission in the Biennial with... Um, I remember. Uh, with, with... <laughs> Kutsa, so I, I have a naughty was... question for you. Yeah, I have a naughty anytime. question for you. What was yeah. your favorite site? And what was your favorite <laughs> artwork? Because <laughs> I know what mine question. was. I know what mine was <laughs> and I will tell you. It is a very naughty question. <laughs> uh, can you ask? Uh, I think what happened, so what happened in Lahore, I mean, what we were able to pull together, uh, pull through together, uh, I think, Zara, that was perhaps my biggest. Probably um, the best bit. That makes complete uh, sense. 
because I think uh, something really me, uh, uh, important happened here. We, we came on the crossroads of lots of thought processes, people, um, important artworks, uh, new commissions. Um, I think they, there's so many beautiful, I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm afraid of taking names at this time, but I think Don't worry. it was really beautiful to, to, to visualize uh, Wild Shockey's Cabaret Crusade in, in Lahore Fort. It was really nice mm. to see how he responded to his work that has uh, was produced so many years earlier. Yeah. And now he was looking at it um, at uh, the fort and he was like, okay, I think I'm going to come back again and, and produce yeah. another artwork here because this is this response That's the site the whole yeah. and the site response so well. uh, there were three four artists uh really uh john Akumfra got re really enjoyed mm. um, uh, before and he wants to review and see how if he can make a work here you know i think al mogul's work was really amazing i think some of the delicate works like yusuf and yunus nomani I think um, uh, the young students are still students in, in, in India and they, they, they work, the subject matter is the kids in Kashmir playing and, and it's, I think it's a beautiful piece. Yeah, um, that was a really I lovely think, one. You know, I have to tell you, yeah. I absolutely love the planetarium and A, for the works in it, but B, also for the fact that you had revived it to an extent because from what I understand, yeah. it had been closed before. And so that's yeah. sort of what I link the Biennale with, the fact that you opened so many stunning buildings for us. Kutsia, mm -hmm. we, I was wondering, are you happy to take questions now for about the last five minutes? Sure, sure. There's so I'm many more things I want to ask you, but I know that you probably <laughs> are quite busy and we're almost done with our hour. So I thought we could uh, check a couple of those now. Sure. Okay, lovely. Uh, is, oopsies. Everybody, let us know if you have any burning questions for Kutsia. She's more than happy to answer them. And if not, we can continue on with our discussion for the last five minutes. Uh, somebody's yeah. asking about the yellow. I think that's just a coincidence. Great minds <laughs> and all that. Um, is art <laughs> always political? Um, well, yeah, not, yeah, not, yeah. not always. <laughs> we can answer that one quickly. Yeah, no Almost always. Um, there's a saying that the goes art is not a comfort. Could say you can also sort of scroll up and down if you'd like with the questions. So if there's anything that okay. catches your uh, eye, do let me know. Okay, one second. <laughs> there quite quite a few thumbs up and, and yeah, yeah, lots of thumbs up, many hearts. <laughs> yeah. Someone's asking if the Biennale is happening this year in any capacity, whether you're holding research seminars or residencies or any sort of talks. Absolutely. Um, Biennial can't happen this year because it just already happened. No, we no, finished course, on the but, um, um, Yes, and we're still concluding various aspects of the Biennial. Um, I think uh, in two years, but we will also see a lot of world realities have changed. So let's see how uh, we fare in, uh, in the mix of it all. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly we announced uh, a couple of... Um, uh, um, research grants, uh, I mean, research cell is very important to us and we will be announcing some research grants for that. We did announce at the opening that, you know, we will be, uh, you know, conducting those. So I think later in the year, Fantastic. definitely we're going to do that. Uh, we have a ecological arm of uh, the biennial, we call it the afforestation, uh, Lahore, yes. where we planting trees and looking at Lahore's ecological kind of um, health. I think that particular side will also have uh, lots of uh, openings uh, for Brilliant. engagement. Um, and uh, That's so a really this, interesting project, Kutsi. I actually, I actually wanted to ask you about it properly. We're running out of time, but still, please tell us a little bit more about it. How did it come about? And how much have you again, achieved so far of your target? Well, the, 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 we, we, 
done a bit of work on that. Um, Good. Uh, I think ecological health, uh, environmental health is very important. Uh, and artists respond to this. We see a lot of artists responding very, um, very uh, strongly. And I think we would like that too. We would like to engage with um, e the ecological concerns. And I think it's a very important aspect of our lives. Um, we uh, have created um, a, a government public um, partnership. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a consortium and we work through that. It is of uh, various, um, you know, you know, government bodies, and then various um, uh, people who have some done some significant work, and are doing significant work uh, in environmental concerns. So instead of going on the road and shouting at each other, and not being able to hear each other, I think this is a very good platform where people can actually sit together and talk about our concerns and talk about various ways of taking. Uh, making uh, going towards solutions uh, towards these environmental concerns. Um, it's actually running very well. And okay. we have a very active platform. Uh, we had planted over two, uh, two and a half lakh trees last year. This year we are working, we planted last year, we planted a, a Miyawaki style urban forest. Um, uh, we realized that it it's, you know, the, the benefits of that is really, intense so this year we are actually focusing a lot on that uh, in, in two weeks I believe the Prime Minister is coming to inaugurate one of her sites That's very special. So it, yeah but these are public spaces we, we're looking and the artists uh, are designing them and we're inviting uh, you know this is definitely one of the platforms if you go on a website uh, a forest uh, or Lahore Biennale Foundation, you'll be able to actually, you can actually uh, pick up a community park near you or uh, one of the locations that are listed there. We can actually help you pick up and then uh, with experts, local experts uh, who know about the indigenous plants, indigenous species, the artists or the creative thinker can actually design these locations for us. That's fantastic. So, uh, Good to so meet you. 30 minutes, seconds left. So I'm going to do a quick thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for taking out so much time and chatting to us. Everybody, thank you for your questions and your comments you. and for your time. Um, do go onto the website like Kutsia recommended and take on this challenge of forestation for yourself as well. And there was one question about Malcolm's work, uh, Malcolm Hutchison's work in uh, Collateral. That was actually the Collateral Art Divi created. So thank you so much for checking that out and commenting on it. But Kutsia, thank you again. It's, thank you. And everyone, right. I look forward to thank seeing you. you next week. Thank bye bye. You. Thank you, Zara. Thank you. Thank bye. You.